Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. I don't know whether you've ever heard the story of the, uh, the little boy who was very determined that he would get what he wanted from Santa this year. And so a whole week beforehand, he knelt down beside his bed and he prayed a week before the big day. Dear Jesus, I have been good all year. So don't worry about the iPhone that mummy's asked for. Don't worry about my little sister's pet puppy. Just make sure that I get the Hot Wheels Ultimate City multi-level garage that I've asked for. But as he was praying, he realized that he hadn't been good for a whole year. And so he started again. Dear Jesus, I've been good for a whole week. But again, he realized it wasn't quite true. So again, dear Jesus, I've been good for a whole day. And then he remembered the way he pulled his little sister's hair that morning. And so he opened his eyes and he decided on a completely different strategy. He went downstairs to the little nativity scene. Um, in the front window, and he took the little figure of Mary and he popped it into his pockets. Back upstairs, knelt beside his bed. Dear Jesus, if you want to see your mum back anytime soon, <laughs> that's uh, Hot Wheels multi level city garage, better be on its way. Well, I don't know what it is you want for Christmas um, this year because it's not just the children who get excited. Adults, I think there are a lot of things we get excited about as well. Um, I came across a list this week of the uh, top three best-selling Christmas presents this year. Here you go. At number three, and I have to just to say um, with my wife sitting over there, a little hint that I wouldn't mind any of these ending up in my stocking next week. And number three bestseller this year, this mini projector, which you can link up to your phone and you can watch movies or game um, all from your phone on a big screen. That's quite exciting. At number two is the heated coaster. Apparently, it'll keep your hot drink warm all day, and when you're not using it as a coaster, you can shove your phone on it, and it will charge your phone. Number one, the best-selling Christmas present this year. Are you ready? It says it all. The rechargeable hand warmer, (laughs) which I think says a lot about where we are at the moment, doesn't it? Well, of course, the reason for all of these presents is an even greater presence. And so if you thought these things are impressive, I'd love you just for five minutes just to take a look at God's Christmas presents to the world this year. Probably the most famous sentence in the whole Bible, because it is such a good summary of God's Christmas present to the world. And it says this, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And I'm very quickly just going to say two things about God's Christmas presents. And the first thing is that God's Christmas present, I think, comes as a big surprise. So let me get Livy to come and join me at the front. Um, We love people who love us. The surprise about God's Christmas present is that he loves a world that hasn't loved him. So here's Livy, and the thing you need to know about Livy is that she has two best friends called Amber and Amelia, pictured there in warmer times. Um, Imagine, though, if Livy treated her best friends like I treated God. Imagine she went into school and she ignored her best friends all day. In the playground, she lived as if her best friends did not exist. If Livy treated her friends like I treat God, how long would their relationship last for, do you think? What do you reckon, Livy? One second. One second. That's probably quite optimistic, isn't it? 
can you see now why God's love is quite surprising? You go and sit down, Livy. Now, I've got two sons. Can I get my two sons to come and join me? We've got a full sort of family um, compliment this morning. I have two sons, everyone. This is uh, Will. This is Charlie. And so you could say that compared to God, I'm doing quite well for sons, aren't I? Um, God has one. I've got two, right? Even though I have a relative surplus of sons... I am not giving them away for any one of you. I would not give one of these if you were my best friends. I would not give up one of these boys if you treated me like I treat God. You go and sit down. What makes God's love so surprising is that he has loved a world that has ignored him and treated him as if he didn't exist. He sent his son so that if we believe in him, we go from perishing to eternal life. If I wanted to prove to you that at the heart of the universe is not randomness or cold indifference, it is not obvious, is it, that the thing I should show you is an instrument of torture? I don't think that's obvious. If I want to prove to you that the heart of the universe is love, that I should show you a public execution. Is God mad? Is he sick? Well, no, he loves us. He loves you. And so he sends his son. He gives up his son so that if we believe in him, we have life. And then slightly more briefly, God's Christmas presents. It deserves a response. So I'm going to ask some of the children what they are hoping to get for Christmas this year. So let's go to the front row. What are you hoping to get for Christmas, Bella? A giant teddy bear. A giant teddy bear. A Fitbit watch. A Fitbit watch for Rufus, very fit, very healthy. An England shirt. An England shirt for Nathaniel. Go on, Gracie. And a microphone. A microphone. Go on, Joshy. Any ideas? I don't know. Not sure. Let's go to Chikamji. A Nintendo Switch. A Nintendo Switch. Now, kids, can you imagine what do you think the chances are of you guys Christmas Day leaving the presents unwrapped under the tree. You know, um, other things seem too important. I got distracted, other things more impressing. I never got round to opening my Christmas presents. What do you think the chances are, children? Not very high. Why is it then that so many of us fail to personally receive God's Christmas presents? Let me get two volunteers Do you want to come up, Lola? Do you want to come up? And um, let's get Chikamji to come up. Lola and Chikamji. And imagine Lola over here is out for her swim. Okay, out for a swim. Here we go. Um, But Lola, let's get you some uh, swimming kit. There we go. Right, can we put the goggles on? And the swimming hat. Imagine Lola here is out for a swim. But Lola, that's a good idea. Lola gets into trouble in the water. But it's okay, as luck would have it. Here is Chikamji, who is a lifeguard. And so Chikamji jumps on her bodyboard and she arrives to rescue Lola just in time. Lola. There we go. We'll keep it like that. Very good. There's always a problem with hairstyles, isn't there, up here with props. Lola, let me rescue you. Take my hands. Let me pull you out of the water. But imagine Lola says to Chikamji, no, thank you. I'm all right. Nothing to see here. Can you imagine how silly, how absurd it is when humanity says to God, here's your Christmas presents. No, thank you. I'm all right. Nothing to see here. What does God think to a response like that? I sent my only son to die for you. Why do you think I did that? If everything is okay. Why do you think I did that? You guys go and take a seat. Um, There's an old vicar. Thanks very much, Leila. There's an old vicar in... um, 
in Cornwall who had a painting in his um, lounge of a famous episode from the Old Testament where Moses lifts up a bronze snake in the wilderness and people just have to look at this bronze serpent and they are healed. It's actually, can you see the sentence, the previous sentence um, in the Bible to the one that we're looking to. And in this painting, there are four victims. Victim number one, he's kneeling down before this serpent, but rather than looking at the serpent, he's looking at Moses, as if Moses is some kind of priest or intermediary. Victim number two, lying on his back, everything's all right, nothing to see here, no problem. Victim number three is a really sad-faced man, running around doing loads of good works and charitable deeds, thinking that is the way that I'm going to be healed, accepted. Victim number four is a valiant man who's all about fighting and doing battle with these serpents. And this victim, uh, this, sorry, vicar in Cornwall, W. Haslam, he looks at this painting and he observes that no one is doing the one thing they're commanded to do. No one is looking at the bronze serpent. And that is the story of all human religion and philosophy. Victim number one, we need a priest. We need an intermediary. Victim number two, the secular atheist. There is no such thing as evil in our world. No problems. Victim number three, I just need to run around and do loads of good things so that God will accept me. Victim number four, I'm just going to fight and battle the sin and the evil inside me. And here's a quote from the world of Freemasonry. By square conduct, level steps and upright intentions, we hope to ascend to those immortal mansions where all goodness emanates. We will work. We will do it. We will climb. But Jesus says, all you've got to do is look and believe and trust. Uh, Folks, the the best Christmas present this year is the Christmas presents that has already been given. So please, please don't make the mistake of leaving the Christmas presents unopened. It is 100% free, 100% unconditional. All you have to do is look and believe and trust. Might you allow me to lead us in prayer? Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, the Son given to us by the Father, Help us to believe in your name and receive eternal life. Wonderful counsellor, you order all things by your wisdom. Help your people to reveal your grace and your truth. Mighty God, the government is on your shoulders. Guide our earthly leaders to govern in all justice and righteousness mindful of their accountability to you. Prince of peace, you govern in peace. Give physical aid and the light of the gospel to all who suffer, particularly remembering the people of Ukraine this Christmas. Lord Jesus, Son given by the Father, hear our prayers, receive our praises, fill our lives this Christmas. Amen.